And what we're going to be doing now is digging deeper into the Gospels, uh, even into the New Testament. And we're going to begin with Matthew chapter 11 and verse 1 through 3. Here it comes to pass, Yeshua had made an end of what? Sav, commanding. His 12 disciples, he departed there to teach and to preach in the cities of his disciples. And then it says, when John had heard in the prison the works of the Messiah, he sends two of his disciples and said unto the Messiah, are you he that should come or do we look for another? Okay, so here's John. He's in prison and he's waiting to be released because he's about to get his head chopped off. All right. And he's asking, are you the one that should come or do we look for another? Now, many people think, why would he ask that when he's the cousin and he's the one who announced, here's the Lamb of God and all this does anyone have an answer why he would have sent his disciples to ask Yeshua when he grew up with them as a cousin? Does anybody have an answer? I know John would. What? Exactly. The Jews have always believed there would be two messiahs. We see one messiah and two comings. They always saw two messiahs and one coming. And I'm going to explain that. Now, why in the world would they think there would be two messiahs? All right, well, we have to put our hats on from 2,000 years ago. Hindsight is 2020, okay? But we have to put on our yarmulkes, okay, from 2,000 years ago. And look at this verse, Zechariah 9, verse 9 it says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. He is very humble and he's riding on a donkey and upon a colt, the foal of a donkey. So here, you can see on the screen, as they saw the Messiah coming very humbly on a donkey. But wait, there's more. Look at Daniel 7, 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages would serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So, Look at the screen. They also see the Messiah coming with the clouds, the Son of Man. And so they go, gee, that's, that's powerful. That's mighty. That's a king. So does he come on a donkey or does he come with the clouds? Okay. And so say, so how do you, how do we, how do we know? They said, well, there had to be two. There had to be one because of Isaiah 53, a suffering servant that will die for the nation. And then right after that comes the conquering king, okay, who establishes the kingdom. Makes total sense to me. I mean, when you think about it, if you were here 2000 years ago and you had these two verses, you would think there would be two also. So what John is asking him, are you the suffering servant or are you the conquering king? Are you the one that's coming and do we look for another? Are you going to somehow serve both roles or do we look for another? So that's what John was asking him. Okay. And that's real important to understand what their thinking was. But I also want to justify why they thought that way. I mean, that would make sense to me as well. If I saw these two verses and I'm trying to understand them, just like today, there's a lot of New Testament verses. We try to figure it out and we don't know because... They could be, they look contradictory. 